Welcome to the Home Design Mentor Channel. I'm California architect Steve Rundell. Residential design fascinates me. On today's show, we'll visit Palm Springs, California, that beautiful desert city in Southern California that's full of mid-century modern architecture. Join me and documentary filmmaker and writer Hope Anderson as we take a look first at the city of Palm Springs and then visit Richard Neudra's 1946 Kaufman residence. a chapter of Friends of Arts virtual event, the first one of 2021. I'm Hope Anderson, Regional Chair, and today's guest is architect Stephen Corley Randall. Born in Texas, Steve earned his architecture degree at Texas A&M before moving to California, where he has specialized in residential architecture for three decades. He has designed houses throughout California and Hawaii and is currently based in Palm Springs. Steve is a contributor to House, the online shelter magazine, and has written extensively on architectural history. He also sells his original house plans online. His website information will be available at the end of the program. Today, he will take us on a virtual tour of the iconic Palm Springs houses of four notable 20th century architects, Richard Neutra, William Crystal, Donald Wexler, and Stuart Williams. During the presentation, you can type questions in the comment box. I'll read them at the end of the presentation. Without further ado, I give you Stephen Corley Randall. Thank you so much, Hope, for asking me to come and talk with your group today, Friends of Art at the Davis Museum of Wellesley College. I appreciate this opportunity very much. As Hope has said, I am an architect in California and I became an architect so that I could design houses. And today what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of a tour in Palm Springs, California, where I currently live, and look at four remarkable homes and developments and four of those architects who designed those houses. Palm Springs is located 100 miles east of downtown Los Angeles. The mighty San Andreas Fault runs just 10 miles north of the city, which produces our very dramatic landscape. Joshua Tree National Park is to the northeast and the Salton Sea is to the southeast. The Santa Rosa Mountains here in the distance are to the southwest, and as you face west, we have the San Jacinto Mountains and the San Jacinto Peak. The San Jacinto Peak is over 10,000 feet in elevation. The peak is a mere eight miles from downtown Palm Springs, which elevation is only about 450 feet. It's one of the most dramatic elevation changes in the world. To the northwest, we can see the San Gregorio Pass and Mount San Gregorio, which is over 11,000 feet. There in the lower part of our image, you can see the windmills that are in the, uh, near the pass, ne near the San Gregorio Pass, which produce our very strong winds that we uh, experience here in Palm Springs. If you are further west against the mountain, you have less of a chance of getting those strong winds, uh, west and south of that mountain that's next to us. How did Palm Springs come to be? Well, of course, there were natural springs that are here. Um, and in the 20s and 30s, it became a resort, a spa resort. Of course, nobody stayed here through the summer because of the extreme temperatures and air conditioning was not something that you really were able to get at the time. But then in the 30s and 40s, the uh, movie stars, the celebrities from Los Angeles in the film industry discovered that they could go to Palm Springs. Their contracts restricted them to be within a certain radius of 
uh, Los Angeles so that if they were called back to the studios, they could get there quickly. And Palm Springs was just inside this radius. So as time went on, these movie stars started building nice houses in a very uh, good parts of Palm Springs and hiring architects and prominent architects to do so. And then, of course, in the 50s and into the 60s and 70s, we had presidents move to the area. Eisenhower and Ford both retired in this vicinity, and um, the area became known for its practically year-round golfing and tennis. So Palm Springs got a national notoriety through all of that process, and we are going to go to our list of architects here here and start with Richard Neutra. Richard Neutra was born in Austria. He studied with Adolf Luce and worked for Eric Mendelssohn in Berlin in around uh, 1915, I believe it was. And he ended up immigrating to California in the uh, 1920s and befriended the other architect, Rudolf Schindler. Uh, he has his own typeface, which you just saw a moment ago. A Neutra face. And then the second architect that I'm going to talk about is William, Stuart Williams, excuse me, Stuart Williams. Stuart Williams was from a family of architects out of Dayton, Ohio. His father designed the office buildings for National Cash Register in that city and did work in Palm Springs in the 30s. By the 1940s, when Williams was uh, working, he decided to move to Palm Springs and open up a practice here. And so did his other family members as well as, as well as his brother, who was also an architect. And they created a firm. They did lots of work in the area, including a house that we'll take a look at today. The third architect that I want to talk about is William Crystal. Crystal was born in Shanghai to a prominent film industry businessman. He ended up growing up in Beverly Hills, went to USC, and then formed a architecture firm after he got his license with Dan Palmer. Palmer and Crystal was the name of the firm. They did lots of projects, thousands of houses and condominiums as well in Southern California and in other places across the United States. The last architect that we'll take a look at is Donald Wexler. Wexler was born in South Dakota, went, uh, grew up in Minneapolis, and then went to the University of Minnesota to get his education. He moved to California uh, around 1950 and worked for a short time for Richard Neutra, our first architect that we're talking about today. But he soon thereafter created his own firm and worked in Palm Springs for many decades and did lots of different types of projects, a few houses, which we'll take a look at one of his today. As we go through this, I want you to think about the architecture in these five parts. When you have this mixture, you have a successful architecture. And the first is his history. In Palm Springs, we're mid-century modern. We're in a beautiful location with year-round wonderful weather. The second component is the composition. How is the house laid out? What does it say to the occupants? How does it feel to the occupants? What does it do for them? And then the third element that you want to consider is form. What does the architecture, the physical shape of the architecture say? How does it communicate the design? What does it demonstrate for its occupants? How does it express in its form? Then, in fenestration, windows and doors. As the eyes are the window to the soul, the windows reveal the soul of a building. Doors and windows are important to the character of any building. And finally, architectural details. The final signature of a building, what does a, um, all of the trim, all of the finished materials, what do they say about the architecture? How do they make the exclamation point, the final statement of that building. So think about these as we go through this. History, composition, form, fenestration, and details. The first house we'll take a look at is Richard Neutra's 1946-1947 Kaufman residence, one of the most famous houses in the entire area, probably in Southern California. This international style uh, architecture 
an international style is that style of architecture that developed uh, around the world between World War I and World War II, early modernism, rectilinear forms, cubist massing, walls of glass, disappearing doors. You could use all kinds of materials, stone, stucco, wood, steel, and glass in various combinations, as you see in this particular example. You have a metal fascia, a stone exterior, a stucco exterior, and of course, expanses of glass. So the Kaufman residence is located near the old Riviera Resort in Palm Springs in the northwest part of the city. The downtown area is to our right here in this uh, historical photo from 1960. And so we're gonna go and take a little bit closer look. What I've done here is created a model of this property so that you can get a really good feel for this architecture. There was a carport that you could come into and then there was the main entrance and you can see how the forms of the building sort of cascade down. You approach and these forms cantilever out over you as you enter this beautiful courtyard with its large swimming pool and lawn and boulders that were in this part of Palm Springs, there were these large boulders all over the site, which they just incorporated into the landscape, landscaping of the project. In January of 1970, uh, Slim Ahrens, the famous celebrity photographer, was in Palm Springs, and he knew there was a Neutra house, and he found out who the owner was, called her up. Her name is Nelda Linsk. She was, or is, she still works here as a real estate agent. And he said, can I come over? He said, throw a party and I'm gonna come over and take some photographs. And so he took this particular photo, which I've recreated here for you in my model. But if you look up poolside gossip on the internet, it will come up instantly. And you will probably know that you've seen it somewhere before. That famous photograph where she is sitting on the chaise long to the right and her friend, Helen Captor, is sitting to her left on the other chaise long. She is the wife of another notable arch Palm Springs architect of the time. I mean, who wouldn't want to be at this party? This was the lifestyle. When this was published, it was the envy across the country for that kind of living, that Palm Springs open air, indoor, outdoor. It's all about in being indoors and seeing the outdoors and being outdoor and looking and seeing right through the structure. This house was owned over time by various people. Barry Manilow happened to own it at one point. There were alterations done to it in the 80s and 90s over the years, uh, which really uh, took away from the original architecture. It was bought by a couple in the 90s, which uh, they restored it by the help of a architecture firm in Los Angeles, Marmol Radzner. They did an extensive re re renovation. It was into the millions of dollars. But um, I want you to see this house a little more closely here. The pool, this is a gently sloping site, again, with these boulders around it. And the swimming pool is just a few steps below the main part of the house. Main house had a floor that was radiant heat. And he extended that heat into the pool area. Of course, I mean, you know, on a wet January night or a, or a, or a cold January night and you're getting wet out of the pool, you wanna, be, you wanna have your feet warm at the very least. And so um, another thing here, you can see it steps up and there's a living area there kind of in the middle of the picture and the master bedroom suite over overlooks the big swimming pool. And then there are these two areas to the west, um, to that left, upper left, you see a couple of bedrooms. And then to the north of that, uh, you see a pool and you see the guest suites. And what I love about this arrangement is that they have uh, this spiraling effect out from the central core of the house. And when you think about it, these areas of the house are all very private. If you go to your master bedroom, you have that sort of isolated, isolated area there. And if you go to your other bedrooms there to the left, you uh, have some privacy from the rest of the house behind the kitchen. And of course, the guest suites are also um, very private. You go outside before you go back inside to actually get to them. So you have a very um, 
casita effect is what we call that here. Or we call them casitas where it's detached from the main house. And see the pool there that's a cooling pond, which I'll show a little bit more in a minute. And on the left-hand side of that were these metal louvers that they could open and close. And I'll talk about that more in a minute. And then on the roof, what uh, uh, Schindler did is, I mean, uh, Neutra did, is he put on a gloriette. He called it a gloriette. It was a roof deck. And the fireplace from the living room extended up there, and they had a fireplace for that uh, space as well. So after he got this house going, it um, was built <laughs> for $348,000, uh, a huge amount of money at the time, of course, and it's, uh, which is an equivalent of about $4.7 million today, considering that the house is actually on the market right now for $25 million. I think that may have been a good investment, although, of course, the renovations that they did in the 90s were quite expensive as well. Um, and as we go forward here on our slides, I'll go back to this overview of the house, and we'll twirl around and talk about these forms. I love the massing, these, this again, this spiraling effect that comes around the chimney, anchors the whole scheme. You have this wonderful roof deck, these simple planes and simple planes of walls that with a single material that define glass walls that face out into private patios. And these louvers that you see on the Gloriette on, on the pool, what they would do is they would open and close those, those depending on that northwest wind that was coming in from the San Gregorio Pass to protect them from those strong winds. As you go in here, you can see kind of the intimacy of the spaces, this wonderful guest suite here to your right in this courtyard with its boulders and lawn and pool. And I'm gonna come around here and I'm gonna swing into this Gloriette. There is the fireplace. They had a planter put in place as the railing. You come up on a staircase from the outside and there to your left in that square uh, form that's coming up through the roof there is a shaft that goes to the kitchen. Well, they had a dumbwaiter in there because of course, you have to be able to get your drinks and hors d'oeuvres up to the deck because that's what Palm Springs is all about. Having a good time with your friends, drinks, cocktails, going out to dinner. I'm grateful to have had the chance to share my passion with your listeners. Please don't hesitate to reach out. Follow me on my websites and YouTube channel and social media accounts. Cheers, my friends.